You're listening to the Never Heard of It podcast, a Night Shift Radio original. Every week we bring you the good, the bad, the weird, and lesser known streaming movies. Hit subscribe for new episodes every Thursday and Sunday. So Lance Reddick has two new uh, shows out on Netflix right now. I just saw that he was going to be in something, and it was because I recognized his voice. I re- I, always, I know who he is, but I always recognize his voice before his face. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, so Lance Reddick, uh, you know, uh, one, uh, funny, funny enough, is in John Wick. Uh, we were, <laughs> you know, we're just, you know, in our upcoming episode, we're going to make references to John Wick. Um, but I guess uh, for video game people, Lance Reddick is Commander Zavala in mm-hmm. uh, the Destiny franchise. Indeed. Um, he's also been a voice actor for tons of things. He's been in lots of movies. Um, but the two most recent things is uh, he actually is also playing Thomas Wayne in uh, the podcast series Batman Unburied, which is awesome. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But he is in uh, the new uh, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Um, uh, or is it just Resident Evil? Uh, it's Resident, just Resident so Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City, I think, was a film. I think it was an uh, animated this... one, right? No, I Maybe think it was yeah, live action. Know. Yeah. Because uh, there was there was Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, which came out uh, at least a few months ago, if not longer. Uh, but this series that just dropped is a new, like, full, like, series on, I think, Netflix. Uh, yep. Where he plays the, the character of Albert Wesker, who is uh, known as you know, one of the, the umbrella scientists in the, in the Resident Evil lore. Uh, I love Resident Evil. I, like, everything film and television that comes out in the resident evil franchise is i think objectively bad but i love every bit of it and like you can't convince me otherwise so here's the thing so i've watched the first two episodes of resident evil um lance reddick's performance is absolutely wonderful and shocking no one shocking no one he he really is so far kind of carrying it and and uh, we're getting a little bit of like how the walking i mean this is true of most zombie movies right like i am legend this a lot of things where you live in one world and then they flash back to be like you know you know here's here's find out now we're going to go back to fuck around and yep. uh, tell you the story um and that's kind of what we do so that's where we're getting albert uh, wesker's uh, role in umbrella academy or, or in the umbrella um uh corp corporation uh this is an umbrella academy which i and- actually just just finished watching the the third season of Umbrella Academy. Great, so great like series. Yeah, it was a great. Little, a little intermingling in my brain too. Yep, and uh, you know, so we get a little bit of like, how did this all start? And then we see that. Um, and I would say uh, I'm two episodes in, and I would say you're right. It is objectively bad. Um, mm-hmm. There is a lot of moments where I'm like, really, and there is a lot of things that are happening that I'm like, but but like, why? why are we doing this? Like, why is this important right now? Um, but it's fun. Uh, you know, they really haven't, it, you know, we really haven't seen a lot of in, in two episodes really haven't seen a lot of like crazy action. It really is more of like setting up a world that I think is going to expand throughout the rest of the series. I'm going to finish it probably today or tomorrow. Um, and it's not great, right? It, it isn't, yeah. it's not written well, it's acted okay, you know, but there is a lot of stuff where I'm like, okay, you're just going to let, like, you're this huge corporation and you're just going to be like, that's not questionable at all. You know, I was like, <laughs> okay, uh, all right, we'll go with that. Um, um, but but I'm going to watch the whole thing. Uh, I dig it. As an aside, yes, uh, Welcome to Raccoon City was a feature length uh, hour and 47 minutes and it released in 2021. So uh, a further that's what that was. I but I yeah. haven't seen that one yet either and I need to. Because uh, I think they tried to do a, a theatrical release with that. Oh, know, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like even going back to like, I, I loved the the first Resident Evil movie. I did. I loved it. It was it was not good, but I loved it. But uh, I mean, Mila Jovovich, what, you can't. Yeah, she's, right? she's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I think the I think the entire series really peaked at the moment in Resident Evil Apocalypse when Mike Epps character, um, when he is presented with a, a gun by the the stars agents and he's like motherfucker please my shit is custom and pulls open his coat he's got the two gold pistols yeah yeah that live like you will like i'm sorry you cannot tell me that there's a better line in all of film history <laughs> and delivered by mike epps which is uh <laughs> which is accurate and that's the my way it has shit to be is custom, custom. 
I, yeah, you know, uh, the Mila Jovovich Resident Evil's, like, to me, it kind of feels like the Matrix movies, where, like, the first one, you're like, oh, this is really good, and then you get to the fourth, and you're like, you're not even trying anymore. No. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, they just, because there's, like, eight of them, right, of the, of the Mila Jovovich series. Something like, it, like it that. It goes, yeah. like, absurd, and after a while, it's like... You killed your main character and brought her back. You know, it's like aliens with, with you know, Ripley. Like, yep. you know, she's in the first alien and you're like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, Ripley. And then like episode, you know, or like the fourth or fifth alien movie, she's actually one of the robots. And you're like, OK, so this is where we're at now. All right, whatever. Uh, that's kind of how it felt. You know, they just kept bringing back uh, her character, Alice. I believe that she was Alice. Alice. Yes. Yeah, there were there were six films uh, in the Resident Evil franchise in which Mila Jovovich played Alice uh, and the last one being the final chapter, uh, which was 2016. It only took them five years to come with a, a new chapter. With final chapter underscore one in parentheses, like that's, that's final final chapter. Final final, <laughs> final, final dot new dot new. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how they're doing resident evil now yeah yeah so the, yeah so the resident uh evil series streaming on netflix it's getting terrible reviews right now so like it is it is being torn apart um and from what i've read everybody's basically like if it wasn't for lance reddick like no one would have watched this uh i feel they feel like like it would have it, it would get worse reviews if it wasn't for lance reddick and i, I think see. That's great for for Lance Reddick. That's also bullshit, though, because I would still have watched it. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, you probably, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't I, need a lot of convincing. I still slap, watched it because I was like, yeah, Resident Evil. I dig. Slap the name Resident Evil on something and I'll, I'll watch it. Like, fucking, who, why, why should I care? Absolutely. Like, like I already know it's not going to be good. So, like, <laughs> oh, what, am I going to be disappointed? <laughs> yeah. And then that leads us to the other Lance Reddick uh, project that is now out on Netflix. And that is called, uh, it's an animated series called Farzar. Okay. Now, uh, Farzar is made by the same people that uh, made uh, Paradise PD, um, uh, which was another uh, animated series uh, that I, I believe was a Netflix thing. Um, uh, but they did like, a, it's like Brickleberry, Farzar, um, uh, okay. Well, now Ferris and Paradise PD, um, yes, which was a Netflix original. So this is this is made by the same people. It's Waco Oguin who who did this. So in the very first episode, now I watched a couple episodes of the show as well. In the very first episode of this, it's like one of the very first lines. Lance Reddick plays this. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the character's name in Futurama. Um, Hey, Kip, I'm that guy. What oh, uh, uh, Zap Brannigan. Zap Brannigan. He's a very Zap Brannigan character, um, and he plays the king of this uh, world, and he's talking about his his adventures, and one of, he's like telling the story to a group of, uh, of kids, like little kids. They're like maybe six or seven, and they even said like, this is your state mandated history lesson, and he's, he's saying to the kids, and one of the kids says, um, is this going to be more like Futurama or Rick and Morty? And he says, oh, well, how about you shut the fuck up? Um, <laughs> so, but here's the thing. Uh, it has neither the charm of Futurama nor the wit of Rick and Morty. I, mm. there was one joke I laughed at. I, I don't even remember it now. Oh, uh, somebody uh, was uh, one of the guy, bad guys makes a joke, and somebody like you, you see someone on a drum set go do do, and he goes, "Don't touch <laughs> my fucking drums." And that was the only thing I ever laughed at. But the rest of it, it felt like they were like, "We need to Rick and Morty. Like we need to be Rick and Morty, but we're yeah. on Netflix, so we can swear and show dicks and you know be all gross." And it's like, "Haha, see, look how edgy we are." But it. It, there was nothing to it. Like the the jokes didn't land. None of the characters are charming. Like there's nothing. There was nothing redeeming about this. Even Lance Reddick, I was like, buddy, ooh, yeah. like did you not read the script before you went in? Yeah. It it turns out being edgy without being funny is just annoying. It is. See, the thing about edgy is edgy only works if you are smart. And I, mm -hmm. I mean, literally, like there has to be like Futurama wins. You know, Futurama wasn't necessarily an edgy show because, you know, it was it was on broadcast television. 
but it was really, really smart. It had a mm-hmm. touching moments. It had charm to it. You know, uh, even if you think about like early Family Guy was edgy, but it had wit to it. It did. Yeah. It poked fun at a lot of, you know, political, you know, social systems and stereotypes and stuff like that. And it did get, it got, you know, just like Simpsons after a while. It's like, this doesn't need to be on the air anymore. Yeah. But like the first couple of seasons, it did what it meant to do, right? It was smart about it. Rick and Morty is another really great example where there are some really, really great episodes of that show that are just serious and they're good. And the wit is funny because it's smart. You know, it's edgy, but it's smart. This, it's got none of that. Hmm. It couldn't that's, hold me. That's disappointing. It, I, it uh, was. I Because I saw this and I saw the trailer and I'm like, oh, this seems like a Rick and Morty type, like Futurama meets Rick and Morty. That's exactly what they presented in episode one, like a minute into it. And I was like, oh, cool. I can totally get down on that. I love both of those things. Why would I not like this? And then I watched it and I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> There's also something to be said, though, for like, feeling so confident in the like a comparison like that that you write it into the show yeah i I think that was very risky and i don't think it paid off i think it set a precedent that they couldn't it set an expectation that they could not meet um uh at all uh so yeah so this is another netflix series it's an animated series uh, it's not doing well. Uh, right now, it's at a 5 out of 10 on uh, IMDb. Um, let's see what uh, what Rotten Tomatoes is saying about it. But I, I would just be really surprised uh, if, if this lives anywhere outside of, like, maybe a very small community of people that like this style of humor. Yeah, it's sitting at a 40% right now on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not doing well, which yeah. I kind of feel bad for Lance Reddick. He's got two things that are ain't doing good, so good on uh, on in the critics, in the audience. Well, this is a 40% audience score. It's not even a critic score. Um, and same thing with the Resident Evil series. Uh, the audience... Uh, uh, score is um is sitting at a 23 percent with critics at 53 and they've got they've got a bunch of other really great voice talent attached to this i mean without looking too deeply i mean i see john dimaggio david herman and you know names that i recognize on here and like i'm always on the lookout for like some quirky fun new animated series for those like turn off your brain moments usually like sure. at night but like man that's that's disappointing because like i don't want to turn on something like that with the expectation that this is going to be like just quirky and fun and i'm not going to have to think about it and then like spend my time sitting there thinking about how bad it is i don't want that yeah uh and that's kind of where i was after uh uh two episodes um i i even remember during the first episode i was like oh shit am i already on like episode two or three and i clicked on it and i was like I am still on episode one. It is only 27 minutes long, and I'm already Jeez. like, why is this still happening? Oh, that's rough. Yeah, it was really... And the thing is, is like, we do have characters. There is a character that feels like a Rick Sanchez ripoff. There is a character that feels like a Fry ripoff. You know, Lance Reddick's character very much feels like Zap Brannigan, uh, you know, with his wife being the role of, of like a Kip. And it feels like a ripoff of these two properties. It's like somebody was like, I want to make a Futurama Rick and Morty, you know, homage, but they did a terrible job. The they really like, did. I can't speak as much to Rick and Morty because I really haven't watched that many episodes, but like you can't come for Futurama's title and like not be prepared to like to deliver because yeah. Futurama is in my mind still one of, if not like I, I will be so bold sometimes to say like the best animated uh, series. I, I mean, I, uh, I think of that genre like uh, animated uh, adult um, series. Absolutely, uh, I would say any any list that doesn't include Futurama in the at least top three to five is wrong. Mm-hmm. I mean, like just I, I would think yeah. like uh, just objectively wrong. Like yeah. it's not even it's not even like, well, maybe it's like, no, no, no. You are literally just wrong. Like it yeah. is in the top five best animated adult series. Hands down. Mm-hmm. There's wiggle room for opinions on order, but you cannot omit it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. You know, um, so it's just it, it was really frustrating to see these two new properties, you know, kind of come in and and fall flat. You know, I 
you know, we talked about this earlier this year, but Netflix made a commitment that every Friday throughout this entire year, they were going to release a brand new property. Um, so next Friday we That's have, uh, actually, so tomorrow, for those of you listening uh, now, uh, on the day that this episode released, tomorrow we get The Gray Man, uh, which is the Russo's uh, follow-up to Endgame. It's the first film they've done since Endgame, which stars uh, Chris Evans as the bad oh, guy, yeah. um, which That's already is not getting great uh, reviews, but I feel like I'm going to like it. Um, I, I like what the Russo brothers do. I like Chris Evans a lot. I mean, I can't think of a bad movie Chris Evans has ever been in, like outside of MCU uh, movies. I, I can't think of a bad movie he's ever been in. Snowpiercer was amazing. I just I don't listen to to critics or reviews when it comes to like it. I, it's not that I don't think that there's a place for them. Obviously, I mean we're essentially are literally. Critics, but like, <laughs> I don't I don't take my cues on whether or not to watch something or whether or not to think something is going to be good from reviews. I will I will watch it and make my own decision and then go see what other people are saying to see like do people agree uh, or am I an outlier? I think like to me there's value in that. But like in advance, I don't know. I just it, it feels like too many things get torpedoed before they even have a chance because some cranky person who does this for a living and has forgotten joy uh, said it sucked. Yeah, you know, I uh, you know I'm in the same boat as you know. I obviously read a lot of reviews uh, of movies and series and stuff like that. But I've already decided whether or not I was going to see a thing. And the Mm -hmm. only time I actively go out and like read a bunch of different reviews is if I'm on the fence. You know, like there's been a few, you know, a few films and stuff like that that have come out that I'm like, "Eh, I don't know. Uh, Let me see what people are saying. And then a lot of people are like, oh, it's great. I'm like, cool. All right. I'll I'll go see it then if I'm on the fence. But most of the time I've made up my mind to begin with whether I'm going to watch something no matter what people say. That's true. I, I will amend my statement by saying that I will sometimes, if I see in advance a review of something that specifically calls out that there are uh, subjects discussed or like visuals portrayed or like uh, themes in the movie that are just like, I don't want that in my brain. Yeah. I will. I will say, you know what? I don't want to watch that. I, and I've, I've had that a, a few times where or like you know, there's been like some popular new show hitting the, the streaming services and I just happen to be scrolling through the the tech blogs in the morning and I see a headlines like, you know, such and such a show like really leans into X terrible thing. And I'm like, cool. Okay. I'm not going to watch that. And then like yeah. two weeks later, I was like, Oh, we should watch this. It's really good. I was like, eh, I'm not interested. Yeah. Isn't there, there's a, I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. So there's a website called does the dog die.com oh, uh, yeah. that you can check in advance whether a dog in a movie uh, dies. And that's one of those things, you know, like if you're mm-hmm. going to kill off an animal unnecessarily, like, look, there are zombie dogs in resident evil. And when they kill the zombie dog, I'm like, fuck yeah. Cause mm-hmm. it's a mm-hmm. zombie dog, right? It's not a mm-hmm. real dog, you know, but like, there is a live dog, a regular dog in the movie or in that series. And I'm only on episode two and they haven't implied that they're going to kill that dog. But if they kill that fucking dog, cause it's a little Chihuahua, a sh- oh. long haired Chihuahua too, I will write an angry letter, uh, <laughs> to, to this. <laughs> but yeah, so what have you guys been watching lately? Uh, gray man comes out tomorrow. Resident evil and Farzar came out just last week. What are you guys thinking about it? W- w- what are we watching lately? You know, I would let, you know, now that miss Marvel's done, uh, you know, Obi-Wan's over, um, stranger things is done. Like all, all the big series are done. Uh, so like, w- what are we watching now? What are we watching yeah. for now? For now. Uh, well, yeah, because I mean, uh, She Hulk comes out in just a couple weeks, like three yeah. weeks from now, so it's it's going to be pretty soon. Uh, so there's we have a brand new episode coming out this Sunday. For those of you watching on YouTube, make sure to hit subscribe uh, and that notification bell. So every Thursday when we drop a brand new episode, you get notified. And for those of you listening on your podcast player of choice, hey, thanks for doing so. And hey. don't forget to hit subscribe as well and leave a rating and review. It's a thing you can do. I really appreciate it. It rhymed a little bit. Uh, That was nice. (laughs) It was good, yeah. But this Sunday, we have a brand new episode coming out. We're covering the 2021 film Pig, starring Nicolas Cage. Uh, This film is currently streaming in America on Hulu. So if you are the type of person that watches movies before we review them, there it is. If you haven't seen it already, there it is. So make sure to uh, go and check that out. Um, But other than that, thanks a lot for listening, Owen. Thanks a lot for watching. And as always, make sure to share with 100,000 of your closest friends. 
It is the least you can do. Just, just, it's just a click away. All right. Thanks a lot for joining us, everyone. And we will see you on Sunday. Oh.